Hi everyone, our presentation today is about medical marijuana and geriatrics. Today's presenters are Natalie Melvin, Bella Tardy, Kat Irani, and Dana George. In this presentation, we will be going over overview, laws, use, and indications and side effects. Hi, my name is Natalie, and I'm going to be giving a general overview of what is medical marijuana. Statistically speaking, the use of medical marijuana in Connecticut is extremely prevalent. Nearly 54,000 people in the state are registered for their medical marijuana card. There is some evidence suggesting that marijuana is used to treat conditions involving pain, nausea and vomiting, and issues with appetite. While over half of the states in the U.S. have legalized the use of marijuana, it is still a very strict process that requires a written statement from your provider to start the verification process. There are three main types of marijuana that I'll go over today. Starting with sativa, this plant comes from warmer parts of the world, such as Southeast Asia and Central and South America. The general perception is that this plant provides a more energizing and creative high, though it can prompt anxiety in some people. Sativa can also be helpful for people with depression, headaches, nausea, and appetite loss. This plant tends to contain more THC than CBD. Indica is a different plant that originates more in the Middle Eastern countries, such as Afghanistan and Pakistan. It, is, it generally has a higher CBD count and is perceived to have more of a pain relieving effect with a more flat and relaxing high. Hybrids are a combination of both. They are bred and naturally grown and they grow more quickly. The purpose of a hybrid is to improve yield and balance out the opposing effects of the two different natural types. Now going over some facts regarding CBD and THC. Both are present in marijuana but they interact with slightly different receptors in the brain, causing different effects on the body. Medical marijuana that is CBD dominant has minimal THC. As a result, a person will not feel high when taking this medication. This is common in indica products, like I said before. Medical marijuana that contains more THC will cause the person to experience a high when taking the medication. This is common in sativa products. Uh, though similar in what they may help treat, the most important difference is that THC will cause a high while CBD will not. Both CBD and THC are still federally illegal substances and only approved for medication or recreational use in certain states. There are many different formulations of medical marijuana that are available to users. Edibles include things like capsules, tablets, baked goods, honeys, teas, coffees, and other mixes. Vaporizers include cartridges or pods that go into a vaporizer and are physically smoked. Sublinguals are things like tinctures and sprays that are taken in orally. Topicals are things like creams, lotions, oils, and roll-ons that are applied to the skin. And then you have the physical flower, which is a bud that needs to be further grinded and rolled or packed into a smoking accessory. The different formulations include several routes of administration. Topicals like creams or lotions, are serve, serve a different purpose than say a sublingual spray or an oral tablet. The different options for root of administration makes therapy customizable and tailorable to specific patient factors. Hi, my name is Kat. I'm gonna be talking about the laws regarding medical marijuana. So this is an overview of the laws. So most recently the state increased it that you can possess to 3.5 ounces per month and you have to obtain it from a designated dispensary. So ingestion is prohibited in certain areas such as motor vehicles, the workplace, in any public or private school ground and any other public place. And it's also legal to smoke in the presence of a minor unless that minor is a qualified patient. So I'll be talking about medical marijuana cards in this slide. So you have to make an appointment with the prescriber that you have a relationship with and you have to have an approved medical condition that will go more in depth in the next slide. You have to create an account with the state and answer verification questions. You have to show proof of residency prior to making a payment, and the payments can range from $175 to $200. It takes approximately four weeks to complete the certification process, and you get a temporary card in the email after waiting for four weeks, and then within four to six weeks, you get a permanent card. 
Renewal is one year from the certification date, even, even if you did not start using it, but the state does advise that you renew it on the 11th month. So on this slide, I'll be talking about the qualification requirements. The patient must reside in Connecticut. They cannot be an inmate. They also have to have um, an approved debilitating medical conditions. So you can find a list of the conditions on portal.ct.gov. I'll list a few for you. For adults, it includes cancer, glaucoma, MS, epilepsy, Crohn's disease, and PTSD. For those under 18, it includes severe epilepsy, muscular dystrophy, and Tourette's syndrome. It has to be prescribed by a CT licensed physician or APRN, and it's most important to know that you have to have a relationship with your provider and you must have tried other prescription drugs that were used to treat the symptoms. So you've had to have multiple treatments fail before you can go trying medical marijuana. My name is Dana and I'll be talking about how medical marijuana is used and how can geriatric patients use medical marijuana. In all populations, there is definitely a stigma around the use of marijuana since it's gained its popularity with recreational use. However, there are many benefits of medical marijuana specifically in the geriatric population. The most common use for medical marijuana in the United States is for pain control, specifically chronic pain, especially as they age, although it treats many conditions. As future pharmacists, we are cognizant of the opioid epidemic and how it has affected many Americans. Medical marijuana can be typically used as a second line therapy for symptoms that do not improve with traditional treatment. It can be pinned as a safer pain reliever in relation to opioids as well as an option with less possible contraindications in comparison to NSAIDs or Tylenol. Furthermore, there has been documented use of medical marijuana for muscle spasticity and alleviation of nausea and vomiting. Nationally, there has been a trend of increasing use of medical marijuana among the geriatric population. They use medical marijuana for similar reasons as the younger populations, including indications such as pain, neuropathy, insomnia, and anxiety. This list, however, however, is limiting, and not all of these conditions are FDA approved. From 2006 to 2017, the use of marijuana in patients over 50 increased by 71.4%, according to the study marijuana use among adults 50 years or older in the 21st century. Therefore, it is vital to understand the use and effects of marijuana to avoid negative health outcomes. For use in pain, the THC in marijuana helps to relieve pain by interacting with the body's natural cannabinoid receptors and reducing pain signaling and perception. For use in insomnia, the THC in marijuana restores a person's natural sleep cycle. For use in neuropathy, both CBD and THC help alleviate pain and other common peripheral neuropathy symptoms by acting on the body's endocannabinoid system, inducing anti-inflammatory properties. For use in anxiety, THC at lower doses and CBD at any dose can act on the body's endocannabinoid system to reduce anxiety. In general, medical marijuana is typically well tolerated among older adults, so the benefits outweigh any possible risk if we want to consider use in geriatric patients. When patients are approved for a medical marijuana card, they will be directly working with the pharmacist at medical marijuana dispensaries. Connecticut law requires that a pharmacist be on site to dispense medical cannabis products. Just as pharmacists are present in the community, setting to answer questions and provide counseling to patients on prescription medications and over-the-counter products, the same goes in the setting of marijuana dispensaries. These pharmacists are responsible for assessing a patient's condition and pr providing appropriate recommendations based on specific factors and needs. This includes screening for drug-drug interactions, checking for indication of use, counseling on how to take and use different products and what side effects to expect, depending on which type of cannabis is being used. Hi everybody, my name is Bella and I'll be going over the indications and side effects. It is proposed that some conditions may benefit from the use of medical marijuana. Some of these conditions, when appropriately prescribed, include Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy and seizures, glaucoma, ALS, chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, which is CINV, and in patients with chronic or severe pain. It is important to note that there is little to no strong evidence that suggests that patients with these conditions should use medical marijuana. Patients considering medical marijuana should contact their healthcare providers to discuss its role in therapy. 
Of no, Alzheimer's disease is a condition that may be seen in the geriatric population. Alzheimer's leads to progressive memory loss over time and a decreased ability to complete day-to-day -day tasks that the patient once could complete without any difficulty. Some patients may experience agitation, differences in behavior, nausea, or have a lack of appetite as side effects from Alzheimer's. Medical marijuana may help with these side effects. However, evaluation from a medical professional is recommended before use. Some possible effects from medical marijuana may include increased heart rate, dizziness, hallucinations, increased appetite, and impaired concentration in memory. Drug-drug interactions are important to consider, especially in the geriatric population. This population of patients often take a wide, ver wide array of medications that can potentially interact with medical marijuana. Different foods may also interact with other medications or even medical marijuana. These patients should have their current medications, diet, as well as over-the-counter medications and natural products reviewed before using marijuana. Some patients are not indicated to use medical marijuana based on their age or medical history. Use is generally not recommended in the following populations. So patients who are 18 years or old or less or pregnant individuals, patients who have had heart disease and patients with a history of lung irritation or psychosis. And then the next two slides just show some key points from our presentation today. Thank you again for watching and please let us know if you have any questions.